Louisiana Beer Reviews. Here's our second attempt to review Carlo Vaco. Introduced in 1854, it's a European Pilsner, Euro Lager, uh, brewed in Karlovac, Croatia. Now, when this was started in 1854, Karlovac was called Karlstadt. It was ruled by Austria for hundreds of years until 1918, when the Austrians were thrown out. And uh, then, unfortunately for Croatia, they were immediately absorbed by Yugoslavia, and they didn't like that. So when they got their chance in 92, they broke away made their own country. Uh, now I was trying to do this video, uh, the guy was running the blower motor, he started as soon as I started shooting, and about a minute after I turned it off, he cut it off, but luckily they don't run those engines all the time, only from like 5.45 a.m., and they never run them after 11 p.m., so, uh, but like they, they, their philosophy is why have peace of quiet when you can have like really irritating noise all the time. So uh, it's five percent alcohol here for the U.S. Apparently on their website it's five point four. So I guess over there it's a little higher. They used to have it in brown bottles, but then they went to green bottles. And it might have had something to do with Heineken buying them. Heineken bought them out. And when I poured this a few minutes ago, just like now. Had that thick white head, that golden straw bubbly appearance. Made a little crackle. Uh, always praying for the people when I hear the sirens. I'm hoping somebody isn't in a wreck or hurt. Get a lot of sirens because we're right by US Highway 61 and then 51. Get a lot of wrecks and in the hospital back there. But anyway, uh, back to this. It's got the tip. Now, yesterday when I did that review for that, that parish south coast, man, my sinuses were really big time messed up. I mean, I never really felt bad, but my nose was running like crazy and so irritating. Plain. I might reshoot that because this doesn't, I don't think the video looks too good with all that going on. Uh, can't even see the plane with all these clouds. We've got a really low sky, a lot of clouds, but it's warm, so I'm not complaining. It was 77 yesterday. It might get up to 80 today, and then a little cold front's coming through. Uh, grassy hops and biscuity barley malt. I mean, that's what you're going to get with these beers. The flavor is the same thing. Biscuity, barley malt, grassy hops, a light and watery mouthfeel, and a crisp, clean, refreshing, mostly dry finish. I was saying when I previously shot this video, it's like Heineken decided, let's go around Europe and buy up every brewery that makes beer just like we make. So if you drink this, if I told you this was a Heineken, you probably would think it was. Although I think Heineken's a little lighter body than this. Although it's also 5%. But Stella Artois, Heineken, Staro Prom, and I get uh, Krusovich, I could name so many, Golden Pheasant, uh, Pilsner Urkel, the original Pilsner. They're all very similar. They're not exactly the same, but they're mostly the same. This beer gets an okay score in Beer Advocate. Naturally, Rape Beer says 9 out of 100, terrible. But then for the style, they're saying 75 out of 100. What does that tell you? They don't like the style. Uh, this would go so well with uh, Croatian food. There's a lot of Croatians in the New Orleans area. I guess because it's mostly Catholic, a Catholic area, and uh, they moved out here for that. Uh, plus, we're by the seacoast. You got the Sotinovic's that own Drago's, Drago Sotinovic. He started that restaurant, Seafood. This would go so well with that food. They have the, dro the uh, Dorgnacks that have the grocery store. I buy a lot of beer. Even my family, some of my family, my mother's side of the family came from that area. Uh, from Trieste, which was an Austrian city for hundreds of years. That's where they disembarked from. Now, where they were actually from, the Osanox. I don't know, somewhere in there. Uh, they weren't Catholic, though, so it makes you wonder. But somewhere, probably Croatia, or it could have been Slovenia. 
uh, Osanox, but they said they were Austrian. Okay, when they came and fill out their paperwork uh, around the time this beer was made, 1800, late, mid to late 1800s, uh, Anton Osanox said, I'm Austrian, which might mean he was ethnically a German or just he was from the Austrian Empire, so that's what he put out on there. We don't know. Okay, anyway, for what it is, a Euro lager, it's really nice. I like the flavor. It's one of those beers that to me is all good and no bad. Uh, when you get a beer like that, you got to rate it high, I think. So for a Euro lager, pale European lager, <coughs> excuse me, it's an A plus, really. I'm not going to say it's as good as Stout or Prom, and that was the, like one of the best beers I've ever had. But uh, and with the green bottle, this wasn't even skunky. And I bought this at Red, White, and Brew in Hammond, by the way. Uh, it's the only place I've ever seen this beer. Same thing with that Cruz Vicha. For beer overall, I think the lowest you could get it would be an, give it would be an A minus. Really, I think it's just typical Heineken, brewed to pinpoint perfection. It's really a reliable, good beer, and that's about all you can say about it. And hey, that's a good thing to say, right? So, Les Les Bon Temps Roulé, another beauty from the exciting world of Heineken International, and I'm gonna end this review by saying, y'all come on down to. New Orleans! <laughs>